Hello everybody, in this video, I'm gonna give you the best recording settings you can use for OBS Studio. So to start, we're gonna open up our settings and go to the first, the video tab actually, just to make sure you have these uh, correct. The base canvas resolution is simply the size of your monitor. So I'm on a 1080p monitor. So of course it's gonna be 1920 by 1080 and so on. The output scaled resolution is going to be what you're recording at. In this case, since we're not live streaming, we're talking about recording, but uh, same thing goes here. So make sure if you wanna record in 1080p that you have this set to 1920 by 1080, which is probably what most people are gonna to wanna to record at. But if you do wanna record in another resolution, just know that this is where you would change it to something like 1280 by 720 if you did want to record in 720p by chance. This is also where you can adjust your FPS values. If you're just recording, um, you know, your webcam or something like that, a talking head type of video, you could leave this on 30 and that's perfectly fine. If you are doing something like gameplay or you just want the higher frame rate, you can set it up to 60. But keep in mind, if you have a webcam, let's say that's only 30 FPS anyways, Bumping this up to 60 is not necessarily gonna make your webcam look any better. Once you've configured the video tab, we're gonna go over here to output. And then on the very top, you're gonna to see something called output mode. For a lot of you, if you just installed OBS, it might be set to simple. What you wanna do is change this to advanced so we get some more options here. And then once you click advance, we're gonna to go to recording. And here's where I'm gonna guide you through Everything you need to know about this tab, this is where most of everything happens. So to start with, under recording settings section, the recording path is where your videos, when you record them, are going to go to. So if you're not sure where your videos are going or you wanna change where they save to you know, during your recording, you can see that here and then you can also click browse and actually change you know, the path of where they go to, have a specific folder maybe that they go to. In this case, I have mine set to go to my D drive in a folder I have named streams. Once you've set your recording path, you can take a look at the recording format. Now, me personally, I record in MP4 most of the time. This is gonna be the best format for just record it, post it, share it, upload it, edit it, whatever you wanna do with it. .mp4 is the most standard format for anything you wanna do with it. But if something was to happen and say you're in the middle of a recording and you have a power outage or something along those lines, then you could have the file get corrupted and you'll lose everything up until that point. Uh, but for me, I never usually have that issue. I don't think it's ever actually happened to me, but keep in mind if you do use .mp4 and you're recording maybe something that's 30 minutes or an hour long, you might wanna reconsider and use this other option because MP4 can more easily go corrupt You know, if something happens like that with a power outage or your computer crashes or literally any reason. So if you're worried about that, which I definitely would be if you're recording something that's you know much lengthier, maybe a whole podcast or really anything that's gonna be lengthy and you wanna make sure that you do not lose it if something were to happen, then what you can do is actually use .mkv. Uh, basically, this works the same way. It's not really a huge difference, but if you do use .mkv, I'm just gonna close out of this. If you say record in .mkv, you're not gonna be able to upload that directly to your editing software or YouTube and things like that. The first, the thing you're gonna to have to do with it actually is go up to file in the top left, click Remux recordings, click these three dots. And then from there you'll select the file and then click Remux. And it will Remux video into MP4. It really does not take that long. It's just an added extra step. So definitely you wanna do that if you are worried about recording longer. Uh, videos and you don't want any chance of them being corrupted. But for most people, I'm gonna say just use .mp4. It's gonna be simpler, more straightforward, and most cases you shouldn't have any of those corrupt issues. I've been recording with MP4 for several, several years and I've never had it happen to me, but pick whichever format you feel like suits your needs best. Moving on to the video encoder, I have currently been using X264. This is because whenever I live stream, I like to record at the same time. With, within OBS, so whenever I'm live streaming, I use my hardware encoder, and in order to uh, not have any performance issues, I record with something with a separate encoder, which is my X264, which is my CPU. Um, but for most people, if you're just recording and you're not streaming at the same time, what you wanna do is actually go and set the stream encoder to NVIDIA NVENC uh, H264 is gonna be the best one here for most people, as long as you have a somewhat new uh, NVIDIA card. It doesn't even need to be very new. I think the 1650 Super or somewhere around there uh, and anything newer than that will have NVENC new. And in my case, currently it doesn't actually even say NVENC new, but we're just going to go ahead and select the H264 NVENC, which is what you want to select if you do have that option. 
Uh, after that, you can leave everything else the same here, except for you might want to change your rescale output uh, to Lanxos here, and then you can actually change the resolution of your recording here as well. I did show you earlier how to do that in the video tab, but you can also change it strictly in the recording section here. If you, let's say I'm streaming at 1080p and then I want to record at something lower for some reason, uh, then you can, you know, have that, then you're able to adjust that here as well. Now let's scroll down to the encoder settings. Now we have set this to H.264 in this example. So we're gonna go ahead and select for the rate control CQP. This is gonna be the best for recording. Now for the CQ level, this is essentially your quality level. Just know that the lower you put this, the larger the file size, but the better the quality. Um, and the higher you put this, the lower the quality, uh, but also the lower the file size. So. What I like to do is put mine at about 17. 17 seems to be a pretty good balance where the files are not absolutely massive, but you do get very good quality. If you are worried about uh, the size of the file and things like that, you could go anywhere up from like 20 to maybe 23, maybe 24, but you're gonna start to lose a little bit of quality, uh, in my opinion, anything above like 24 or so. So I would say stick between 16 and about 23, uh, but for me, 17 works very well. Uh, after that, Make sure your keyframe interval is just left on zero. Your preset, this can be anywhere between P5 and P7. If you have a really good computer and you're just recording and you want the best quality, you could put it on P7. P6 is a good middle ground, so that's what I'm just gonna use, but it shouldn't make a huge difference in your quality, but set it to either P5, P6, or P7. Unless you have a really bad computer, you might have to lower it down, but it definitely will hurt your quality. After that, our tuning, we just wanna leave this on high quality. Multi-pass mode, you can leave this on single pass or really any of these three options. I typically use two pass full resolution, but I don't think any of these make a huge, huge difference when it comes to you know the outcome of what your video looks like. After that, the profile, you can set this either high or main. I'm not actually sure which one's the default, but whatever is default, you can probably just leave it on that. It's not a big deal. Mine was already on high. I'm just gonna leave it on high. Uh, and then look ahead, you can leave this off. Cycle visual tuning, you can leave this checked. It's checked by default. GPU, leave it on zero. Max frames, leave that on two. Once you've selected all these settings, do not forget to click apply. Also, if you were curious about the video encoder with the X264, the rate control you're gonna to wanna to select for that is CRF. And then I currently use the same 17 value for the CRF uh, rate control type, which still gives me pretty similar quality to the other hardware encoding setting. Uh, but keep in mind that this isn't a uh, one-to-one, -one, you know, comparison with the other one. So 17 on this one is not going to be the exact same quality as 17 with the hardware encoding, but it works very well enough for me and still very good quality. And I'd still recommend anywhere between 16 and like 24 or so for this setting. Once you've got all that done, you're ready to click start recording and record your video. I hope this helped. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.